Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm continuing on from where I left off on Monday where I talked about the four main causes of auditory processing disorder. And if you're unfamiliar with the term of auditory processing disorder, um, but your child has dyslexia, learning disability, ADHD, autism spectrum, chances are not always, but oftentimes poor auditory processing is a huge piece of the puzzle. So uh, I've been talking quite a bit about you know, what it looks like, how it's diff what how it can be broken down or where the breakdown can happen. And today I want to continue on from what are the causes. So I'm going to talk about four more causes today of poor auditory processing. And again, when we start looking at causes, this is where the real magic happens because then we can start digging into actual solutions and not just managing the problem, which is so much of what the focus tends to be on. So, uh, you know, I again, so many parents spend so much of their time and energy when there's auditory breakdown, you know, doing lists and visual schedules and making sure that it's really explicit and they're only giving one or two instructions at a time in the IEPs and all that stuff. And that's great. That's a great management tool, but ultimately we want to move past that. So let me know in the comments below if auditory processing is an issue with your child, if some of the causes that I talked about on Monday resonated. And um, so basically what we want to do when we look at causes and solutions of auditory processing is we want to start digging into the root cause and the solutions which involves nutrition, uh, using key nutrients like lectin and um, strengthening the left side of the brain since that is where the auditory cortex is and the left side of the brain with so many of our kids who have auditory process processing issues is often weak. Healing that auditory nerve or those structures within the middle ear that might have become damaged from things like ear infections which I talked about last, uh, last on, or on Monday. So action plan the two things, and this is my freebie, uh, which I will be talking more about root causes whenever I do my free live training on November 21st, uh, which you can sign up for. I'll put that in the link below. But uh, the two things that I look at and that I use to help guide our process in healing, poor auditory processing, is number one, nutrition key nutrients to heal those auditory structures that might have become damaged for different reasons, to improve the functioning of the auditory nerve, and to overall nourish the brain and so forth. And number two is to strengthen weak connections. So it could be a weak left side of the brain, which is very or what we call an underdeveloped left side of the brain. The right side is more overdeveloped, which is an example of what we traditionally see with dyslexia. And it could also be strengthening that corpus callosum that's between the two brain hemispheres so the communication is flowing better between the left and right side of the brain and you know we we can go deeper into that so we want to look at nutrition and we want to heal it on a biochemical level and then we also want to heal it on a structural uh brain organization level and heal those weak connections so cause number five from so we talked about the four causes last time so this is cause number five yeast and parasites. So this might sound surprising to people who are not familiar with this, but the research is there and I can tell you as a clinician, I see it all the time. Uh, how much yeast and parasites in the gut, bad bacteria in the gut, which can ultimately become systemic, right? Which it, it all is connected. Um, so yeast and parasites can cause impairments in the electrical signaling from the middle ear to the brain. So you might be wondering, well, my child and I have never been to, you know, I don't know, some country where you think there's lots of parasites, because that's sometimes what I hear from clients. It is very common for kids with behavior learning, um, you know, autism spectrum to have parasites. And um, often yeast goes along with that. And causes of that are really not as foreign or complicated uh, or hard to come across, if you will, as you might think. Things like mom being on antibiotics a lot when she was a kid, uh, mom being on antibiotics when she's pregnant, the child being on antibiotics, and it doesn't have to be that many rounds because antibiotics are way, 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 way 
more powerful than they were even when we were kids. They keep getting stronger and stronger to address these, uh, you know, bacteria and so forth that are mutating. And that destroys the gut bacteria. So you want to address antibiotics and so forth if you suspect that this is a factor or a cause with your child and their learning and behavior issues. But other things that destroy that uh, can contribute to yeast parasites, all that type of stuff, gut imbalance, is mom's gut health. Uh, mom's the child gets the mom's gut health from the mom whenever it whenever that child comes to the birth canal. Um, and so it's their gut is sterile until then, and that's when they get their first inoculation. So that's a good thing. However, if the gut health is not good, then uh, the child is going to get uh, this candida or yeast or even parasites, bacteria that mom might have carried. Other things that destroy gut health are chlorine, chemicals, all those types of things that are like not just in our food, but just is bombarded in our environment. So a lot of this can be environmental and um, excess consumption of sugar and carbohydrates feeds bad bacteria, feeds candida or yeast, hormonal contraception, if mom was on hormonal contraception. So all of that can disrupt the gut and cause an increase or overgrowth in yeast, parasites, bad bacteria, and so forth. And it can compromise the immune system. So that's why our kids can become more vulnerable to parasites, which can affect the electrical signaling to the uh, middle ear and, and the auditory cortex and so forth. And that happens because our gut is our immune system. And when that is compromised, then all of a sudden our immune system is not able to address these parasites and so forth the way it normally would. Number two, deficiencies. So I see a lot of kids where there are deficiencies. Sometimes this is uh, a genetic, um, you know, they, they might be more vulnerable to that genetically because maybe they're gen genetically, they have a harder time metabolizing essential fatty acids or zinc or whatever the case may be. I always look at vitamin A, particularly when there's speech difficulties, as well as with dyslexia, when, especially when it leans more towards auditory dyslexia. I also look at, so vitamin A, essential fat, fatty acids, and other things like zinc and so forth. Number three, toxicity. So this is a huge one. And I was actually really surprised when I started learning about auditory processing and what we can actually do to, to uncover and heal the auditory system and what can cause the problems in the first place. And that is that the auditory nerve is particularly sensitive to toxicity. Toxicity like being damaged, the auditory nerve can become damaged to things like heavy metals, particularly aluminum, which is, you know, in all sort, come, our children are exposed to in all sorts of ways in our modern day world. Um, even bilirubin from um, our livers, bilirubin toxicity, can occur if your child has poor liver function or there are certain children who have a genetic uh, predisposition to that. I have one friend, her child had that, her child has dyslexia and he had jaundice when he was a baby and that can damage the auditory nerve. Again, that does not mean that is the end of the story. Um, so what you really wanna do is you want to address the damage to the auditory nerve. You wanna hear, heal those auditory structures and so forth. Um, and But lastly, and I'm just going to say again, I'm going to be t diving deeper into the overall causes of why so many of our children today are struggling with learning behavior, why autism is on the rise, and no, it's not just better diagnosis, which I will get into um, on the 21st during my free live training, which you can sign up for. I'll put the link below. Um, but number four, developmental trauma. So premature birth. Um, traumatic birth, head injuries, concussions, any of that type of stuff. Maybe your child was really sick and had to be, had to go for lots of surgeries. So they're having lots of chemical exposure, exposure that can count as, um, you know, a trauma, if you will, in terms of just toxicity. So all of these factors can affect auditory processing. And I work with clients who've had, you know, in the last few days, I've named eight and I've, uh, worked with clients who've maybe had, you know, four or five, sometimes two, sometimes more uh, of the causes that can contribute to poor auditory processing. So the more you start identifying them and working on them and improving and, and you know, kind of 
healing the auditory nerve and structure, then these kids can really start to improve. They can improve in terms of their focus, their ability to listen, follow instructions, take in information accurately, right? Which a lot of our kids, they can take it in, but not accurately. And that's where stuff gets jumbled and poor learning occurs. And then of course, we all know if you have a child struggling with reading or dyslexia, how much auditory processing impacts phonemic awareness and their ability to blend sounds, detect phonemes, spell, all of that type of stuff. So once again, join me November 21st for the free live training. You can sign up um, in, a, in the link below. And once again, it will fill up. It did last time. So make sure you grab a spot while you still can. Thanks for watching.